Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and I thought I'd start off by having a look at this very interesting poll that I held in the Facebook group I think last week or so. Anyway, the question was, now I've started noticing I changed my watch at almost an obsessive level. Now part of this is because I'm always reviewing a watch but I also switch up quite often. However, I find myself wearing different watches for different parts of the day. Divers for walking the dog, G-Shocks during my workout, a useful complication like a GMT or day date or chronograph during work, and then something dressy in the evening with vino and dinner. Is this normal? How do you decide what to wear? So I basically added 10 categories and we'll start off with the least amount of votes was I don't wear a watch, I joined this group by accident. <laughs> Three votes. <laughs> Next one was I have a different watch for each day of the week. Six votes. Tying with I change my rotation weekly. Then uh, with 27 votes, I'm a one watch guy. What the hell is wrong with you, TGV? With 27 votes. 27 plus votes, I should say. And then the next one what with a staggering 36 or 35 votes. I change my rotation daily. Then with a 48, I wear something required for work. And then when I get home, I switch to something I like. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear what watches are required for what jobs. But anyway, next one with 58 volts, I wear a watch for a few days and then switch up. Basically when you get bored of it, fair enough. Next one was, I'm with you fratello. I change throughout the day too. I'm hardcore gentry like that, yeah. That's what I like to see, 100 strong, nice. 100 plus strong. Next one in second place, I change my watch depending on my outfit. I'm just dapper like that. With a staggering 213 plus, very nice. So quite sartorially based, a lot of us. Anyway, at number one with a staggering plus 275 and upwards, whatever I feel like for the day. So that is the most common reason for what deciding to wear on that day. Very interesting indeed. Before we roll the intro, let me know in the comments down below which one of these categories is how you decide what watch to wear. Anyway, let's roll the intro. <laughs> Okay, hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Today, we're going to shoot a quick episode of a wristwatch talk. Haven't done one for for a while. Uh, now before I get into this video I should do a wristwatch check and uh, yes I'm wearing my wife's Cartier that I bought her. She's out with her girlfriends. Uh, they've gone to a, some trendy event. I haven't got the patience for it but she wears my Saab, my Seiko Saab all the time. I thought I'd just sneak this on. I've got to say it's absolute pure class. This is the um, the unisex mid-size version. It comes in, I think, in about three uh, three sizes. It's the new Tank Solo, I can't remember. I'd, I've reviewed it and I can't even remember, but this is her watch. Please don't tell her, <laughs> but as she's out, I thought I'd have a bit of fun with it. It is, oh. I'm not gonna wear it outside the flat. Um, I don't wanna risk damaging it, but it is. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous, absolute pure class. I feel quite refined um with it on it is very very nice anyway uh wristwatch check done so this is a buyer's guide my top 10 tips for watch collecting now of course uh there's a hell of a lot more i could have made a list of about 50 but i tried to cut it down to the most crucial if you have your own pieces of advice please do share down below i want to help as many people with this video as possible uh, now I've numbered them not in order of uh, importance, although I have left the most important point for number one. Uh, it's basically for reference. So anyway, we'll start at number 10 
and it's a fairly easy one and that is to buy within your budget. I think there is a lot of pressure to buy more expensive. It's safe to assume the more money you spend with things, the higher the level of quality, the higher the refinement, you're gonna start buying into luxury brands and all the rest of it. But that does not equate to enjoyment. And we kind of talked about this in a previous episode. I get just as much fun out of, you know, a $20 Casio like this than I do some of my more expensive pieces for. It's not the same for everybody, but I think it's crucial to stay within your budget. Don't get into debt buying watches. It really isn't worth it. You know, obviously family and, and food and clothes and shelter should always come first. Save your money, put money aside. When you've got an idea how much money you're gonna spend, then you can start researching and finding out and having a look at uh, channels like mine and you can see there's so many amazing timepieces for under even fifty dollars under a hundred dollars two hundred dollars two thousand twenty grand whatever your budget is there's so much out there so when you've established how much money you're going to spend you don't need to spend a lot of money to build a fantastic collection in fact one of the videos i'm going to be doing very very soon I'm gonna be taking the uh, Michael Kors fashion watch that my wife owns, and it's a $275 watch. And I'm gonna show you how many amazing timepieces you can buy for that, for that same amount of money. You can buy a whole collection for $275 and some iconic watches in there as well. So always buy within your budget. You can have a lot of fun. You can have a fantastic collection. You don't have to be filthy rich. There's watches out there for all budgets. There really is. This is actually going into almost a buyer's guide, but we've done that in the separate video. This is really specifically for collecting, for collecting watches. Okay, tip number nine, and that is to buy for yourself. Don't buy to impress other people because at the end of the day, the enjoyment is gonna wear off. You're gonna be wearing the piece. It's gotta be what makes you happy. At the end of the day, if you, if you buy to impress other people, you're not gonna have that same connection, that deeper connection. Buy what your heart tells you. And also don't, don't listen to other, I mean, listen to advice, recommendations, but don't act solely on the, on the advice and recommendations of others to impress others. Buy what you like, what makes you happy. If that means buying 20 Submariners in all different configurations, then so be it. If that's what makes you happy, then do it. A trap that kind of is easy to fall into, and I've done this myself, is buying what fits the collection, not necessarily what you want, you want to actually end up wearing, which defeats the, the purpose. I think you've got to always keep in mind that at the end of the day, we're buying for enjoyment. So I think it's fundamental, always keep that in mind. It's good to think, oh, will this complement the collection? Uh, it's good to think that way, but you don't want to, uh, you don't want to let that kind of thinking rule your judgment. At the end of the day, it's what makes you happy. Doesn't matter if it's you know 20 chronographs or maybe a, a collection that consists of one of every complication. So you've got a GMT there, you've got a chronograph there, you have a moon phase, all the rest of it. What makes you happy? So number nine is buy for yourself. Never buy for anybody else, never buy to impress. Uh, only buy to impress yourself, okay? Uh, number eight, and this is this is something I kind of picked up from uh, Christian's video the other day from Theon Harris. He, he made a really good point. Trying something new, uh, of thinking outside of the box. A lot of the times we stick to what we know, the tried classics, and there's a lot to be said for that. There is a reason they're classics. You know, Speedmasters and Navy Timers and Submariners and you know, Cartier tanks, there's a reason why they are fantastic. And you know, I'm, I'm getting a hell of a lot of enjoyment wearing this particular piece, although I have to take it off before my, before my wife gets home, I do have to take it off. But they might not speak to you. Try sometimes to look elsewhere. You know, I'm, I was very tempted the other day, I saw, a, I met a person who was wearing the Hamilton Ventura. If you're not aware of that watch, it's made famous by Elvis Presley. It's very 50s design. It looks like the wings of a Cadillac. Very eccentric, very out there. Totally not me. I'm quite boring, actually. I'm quite conservative at the end of the day. I mean, the Giugiaro is, is about as flamboyant as I get. But 
when I saw it, I hadn't seen it in the flesh. I started to want one, you know, but it's not really for me. I, I think it's a bit too, you, you know, you need a leopard skin shirt and, uh, uh, you know, you need to be quite quite a, a lively character to pull it off. I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm, uh, I'm not that type. There is something to be said about thinking outside of the box. Also, don't dismiss a watch until you've tried it. This is a mistake I see so many channels do. They, they, they speak badly about a watch or uh, they get kind of snobby about watches. They've never even tried. When people ask me in the comments, oh, what do I think about this watch? What do I think about that watch? I, I, I only comment if I've actually held that watch, worn it. Luckily, I've, I've held a lot of watches, so most of the time I can form an opinion, but I'm not gonna pass opinion ever on a watch that I've never actually tried. So think outside the box, try something different, get out there, experience as many watches as you can, and that kind of opens new horizons. You might love the Venturi, you might absolutely hate it in pictures, but you might try it on in person and fall head over heels in love with it. You never really know until you've tried it. It's like food, it's like, it's like anything, it's like, uh, I was going to make a really bad analogy there, but I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, stay off that one. Yeah, it's like food. That's a safe one. I was going to say something else, but anyway. Take some risks. You know, risks pay off. Uh, what is a risk that, that paid off for me is a good example. Actually, the, the Seiko Shadow is a good example. I don't have access to that. I, I can't go into a store and, and try it. I ordered it on a whim at Christmas time. It arrived. I fell in love with it. Could have been awful. I could have sold it, and ironically, I probably make made my money back. Definitely made a profit now because the the, the prices are shooting up. Add a bit of spice, a bit of flair. You know, it's sometimes if you've got twenty chronographs, how do you not know that a GMT is not going to be fun? You know, a lot of these complications. The, I'm having a tremendous fun with the moon phase. Who would have thought it? Uh, I, I wasn't interested in dress watches a year ago. You know, I, all I thought about was divers, to be honest, and the occasional chronograph. You will find hidden gems out there. You really will. I'm having a lot of fun with vintage these days, so which a lot of videos coming up with vintage as well. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, so that was number eight. Number seven, don't compromise. Don't take the easy route. I see this a lot, people, they're saving up, saving up for that Grail watch, that you know Rolex Explorer or, or um, Speedmaster, Dark Side of the Moon, whatever it is, right? Something comes along, they're kind of halfway into their savings. Something comes along, and they buy it. You know, either either they they succumb to one of my reviews. Something takes their fancy. Give it time. Only time really tells if you're genuinely in love with with something, right? I know it's difficult. I get I get review watches all the time and, and it's very difficult not to fall in love with them. For example, the Young Hands, the, the Telemeister Young Hands Chronoscope Telemeister, I can't remember. I'm still thinking about that watch. What is it, 2,500, something like that, right? It's not a cheap, cheap, uh, sorry, vulgar word. It's not an affordable watch. So you've got to give these things time. But I'm saving up for something a little bit more expensive than that. I could easily blow the money that I'm saving on a young hands or, or something for that quick fix. Stick to your guns, don't rush into things, you know, take your time. Watches aren't going anywhere. If anything, they'll pro you'll, you'll probably find a, a used one uh, pop up on eBay. So don't rush, you know, unless it's a truly, truly amazing deal, like a limited edition that's only 500 in the, 500 in the world. Uh, out there, you know, then, then obviously don't deliberate, go for it. But, you know, that's what, this is what, a $300 watch. It's not, it's not the end of the world, is it? But at the same time, remember life is short. Of all people, trust me, I know this, life is short. If you can get that grail watch by the end of the year, push for it, save a bit harder, get it, you know, stick to your guns, get it. Don't put off your Grail watch for years and years and years. If you want that Submarine, if you want that GMT that, or that Lange, work harder and go for it, honestly, because life is short, you don't know what's around the corner, and you wanna enjoy these things, you wanna enjoy these things, right? That was number seven. Uh, number six, learn from your mistakes. Tastes change, collections change. I, like I said earlier in the video, I was fanatical about divers, 
I had the Aquis, I had the Squale, I had the um, Seamaster, Ceramic Seamaster, a whole bunch of Seamasters, the Submariner. I was all about divers. Now, I'm getting into chronographs. I'm getting into vintage pieces. Tastes change, so it's a mix. It's a mix, and don't rush into things. It might be a fad. It might be a watch crush. If it's a watch crush, you know, we're looking for genuine, true love here, okay? That's lasting relationships. I know we fall out of love as, uh, with watches as well. You know, I've, I've recently fallen out of love with a watch, but I'll keep that for another video. Be aware of that and learn from your mistakes. Don't make the same mistakes twice. That kind of goes into what we were talking about, crushes, right? The wider your spectrum and exposure to these things, um, the, the greater your collection will become. Uh, collections should evolve to reflect that. Having said that, there are people out there that are just adamant they only collect a certain genre or even 20 variations of the same watch. That's fine, whatever floats your boat. Don't worry if, if, if some watches you have to get rid of. Sacrifices have to be made sometimes. Analyze what you did wrong and try not to make the same mistakes twice. Okay, so that was number six. Number five, always do your research. We are so blessed to live in this time and age where we have infinite information at our fingertips. I can look anything up. We should all be embracing this autodidactic new age of information. Arm yourself with knowledge. There are fantastic channels out there. We've got Federico, we've got Theo and Harris, there's KDP out there. Long Island Watches are just setting up their own, their own channel and that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got Blog to Watch, blogs, forums. Uh, so do always do your research. Uh, join my Facebook group. There will be a link in the description. You can pose any questions. We've got thousands of experienced collectors in there. I get hundreds of emails every day. I try and respond to as many as possible, but I can't help all of you. And I do apologize if you sent in emails and I haven't responded. I just simply cannot keep up with the sheer amount of emails I get. But if you join the Facebook group, there's hundreds of people that are even more knowledgeable and experienced than me. I'm just, I'm just a fan of this. You know, I'm doing this channel because I'm a fan. I'm constantly learning, as should you be. If you're new to the hobby of horology, then that's, you know, don't worry. There's, there's loads of people joining my, my channel every single day that email me saying, oh, they've bought their first SKX. They've got $300, $400 dollars to spend. What should I look for? Always check the archives of my channel. There's videos aimed at all price ranges, luxury to entry level, everything in between. We've got such a, a wealth of knowledge out there that's accessible for free to you. So take advantage, arm yourself, with knowledge. Knowledge is the ultimate weapon in life. The more knowledgeable you become, the more you empower yourself, you put yourself in a better position. Then you can go on eBay and find some absolute bargains. And there's a reason why watch dealers hate eBay, because you can undercut even the watch dealers. And it's a wonderful thing, it's a wondrous thing and tradition to learn about. This passion for watches and horology and clocks, you know, it goes beyond just a mere wristwatch. You know, I've started collecting clocks. I want to collect uh, books. In fact, I've just bought another book on uh, watches as well, which I'll, I'll leave for another video. So it's a fantastic, it's a gateway to a whole different world and it's wondrous and exciting. It's all there for you. So just grab it, reach out and grab it and, and, and you know, be on your iPhone. Before you go to bed, you'll be reading fantastic articles about World War II era Flieger watches and you, you know, it's fantastic. Next time you, you, you're at the cinema, you'll be able to, oh, that's, a, uh, that's an IWC, blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and it's fun. It's fun. At the end of the day, once you've armed yourself with that knowledge, you can learn to spend your money right. And you won't make the mistakes that of, like in the previous point. That's number five. Moving on, number four, themes, your collection themes. I did a whole video just about this particular subject. Some people collect they want a different watch for different days of the week. Other people collect to match their outfit. It's sartorially based. I, I think that's a wonderful way to go. We're all different. Other people uh, c collect for complications. They have a favorite complications. For example, chronographs. It's a wonderful, wonderful theme. Some people absolutely loathe chronographs. They are, they're more di into divers. Whatever floats your boat. So have a theme. Figure out what your theme is. 
And usually what determines the theme is figuring out when you wear your watch and why you wear your watch. If you are a carpenter or a car mechanic and you work with your hands, obviously you're not going to collect and wear a uh, Le Coutre ultra thin moon master, whatever it is, right? You're not going to wear a Verso while you're, while you're working underneath a car, right? <laughs> I mean, you could, you could do whatever you want, but it's not practical, right? you're going to want something, a G-Shock or something really tough and robust, um, a Victorinox, uh, the, what was the, the Inox, right? You're going to want something hard as nails to reflect that lifestyle. Then at, when you go home, then you strap on the, the IWC or the, or the uh, Juge Le Coutre Reverse or whatever, right? At the same time, if you're a conductor of an orchestra, you're not going to wear a G-Shock. I mean, you can. you can. You can be as cool as you want to. You can break the rules. Rules are there to be broken. But you want something to complement the, the outfit, right? You want something elegant. There's a lot of factors what, the, what change and what dictate your collecting theme. It's got to reflect your style, your personality, and your tastes. I love people that collect very... Uh, eccentric, colourful watches. I, I love that. I think of Richard Rogers with his uh, Bulova Acuron and his swatches. I mean, really, really cool. They're flamboyant, they're, they're lively, they're vibrant, they're, they match his... He always wears v very kind of fruity colours, you know? And I, I think that's really, really cool. If that's not your style, you don't, don't, don't force it upon you, you know? You've got to figure out what your theme is and then go for it. If you're a diving enthusiast, there's nothing cooler than a, than a collection of divers. I, I love that. I love that. If you're a fan of Steve McQueen, you could collect all the Steve McQueen watches, you know, from the Tag Monaco to the, what was it, Be, uh, was it Benares? Was it Benares in, in Bullet? I, I've forgotten. Maybe it was. I know he wore a Submarine as well, so, you know, that's another really cool way to, to go. Number three. Bigger is not always better. Sometimes the collection size. I would love to be a three watch collection person. I don't think it's ever, ever going to happen because I, I just love too many watches. I could possibly be a five collection person, you know, later on in life. The advantage with having a larger collection is you've got more to choose from. Sometimes if you haven't worn a watch for a month, you pull it out and you, and you fall in love with it again. But the disadvantage you're going to have watches sitting there dormant that aren't being worn. And I, I really do believe watches should be worn. There's advantages and disadvantages. If you, if you just want to consume and, and be a, an absolute hoarder and just have thousands of watches, that's do whatever makes you happy. Uh, however, I do believe that a concise, um, carefully considered collection, a trio all the way up to 12, even 20, I think anywhere between there, that's the optimum size. Then I, I, when you get into that kind of more than 12, going to like 20, 30 watches, it becomes, a, I find it stressful. You know, I, I start worrying. Uh, and then also you've got a lot of money invested in uh, watches and maybe <laughs> you've got to readjust your priorities. But that's not for me to say, that's for you to figure out. But bigger is not always better. Sometimes a concise, controlled collection is great. I've experienced this in music when I used to produce music, uh, in drawing, in anything creative. Sometimes when you take away, when, when something is overcrowded, it can... It, cooking as well, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate things. I really love a very carefully considered collection i think that's that's and it's something i've got to do mine's an absolute mess it's different for me i have a watch collecting channel i have to think what is what is good to review and then obviously because i'm exposed to a lot of watches it's it's difficult you know i i tend to fall in love with a lot of timepieces so my collection is big but it's big because it's part of this now but i do love a concise collection because you really get a more intimate experience with the watches and you wear those watches i think one day i will have a collection possibly seven five seven it will happen one day don't go over the top don't feel the pressure to to buy and buy and buy and buy you know if you're getting too many watches consolidate figure out what a keepers keeper the keeper status i love that that phrase you know i have i probably have like 
five or six keepers in my collection and then I have a, a wider, you know, ones that come and go. That might work for you. But if you're really disciplined and you have a three watch collection, you have my respect. That really takes a lot of dedication. Figuring out roles for all the different watches, you know, I think that also determines collection size. If you have a different watch for the dress and, the, and for uh, one as a beater, one as a day-to-day, -day, uh, one for traveling, one for going to the beach, that kind of thing, that's, that also, that's also a nice way to, to, to tailor make your collection. Number two, setting goals. Something I introduced last year was short term, medium term, long term. As you guys know, my long term dream grail is the Lange, the uh, Langmatic. It's not gonna happen for, for a decade. The benefit of having a long-term goal is you've always got something to work towards, always something to look forward to. That grail, the true grail. Then you got your medium term, which is you know a year away, maybe a couple of months. They also require a little bit more saving up. Then you got your, your immediate ones, like $20 Casios that are just, you know, you buy, you have your bit of fun with, whether they stay or they go, who knows, but they're, they're immediate, you know, you can, you can buy them on a whim and get a hell of a lot of fun out of a watch like this. So I find that really helps. It structures and helps me figure out when I'm going to be buying, time frame, what will complement the, the current collection, stuff like that. So setting goals, it's like anything in life, setting goals is really, really helpful. I, I can't stress that enough. So that was number two. My number one point and this is the most crucial thing, and I don't think anyone says it enough, and that is to enjoy the journey. Enjoy it. Enjoy the, the, the moment you're looking and browsing and, and researching and you're finding bidding on, on eBay. Enjoy watching the videos. Enjoy that moment where you found that watch. Oh, that's the next watch I want to buy. Enjoy it. Savor it. Don't rush into it. Enjoy the moment when you're, when you're waiting for it to arrive. You've saved up for a year and you've, you've bought that GMT or you've bought that ceramic sub or whatever it is, right? Savor it. Because honestly, we, we, we're so infatuated with thinking ahead. I mean, we talked about goals. Goals are important, but don't forget to enjoy the journey on the way. I love talking about with friends, what is your next uh, grail watch with Federico? I text Federico, at, at, you know, midnight saying look at this look at this watch you know he thinks i'm crazy i am a little bit crazy but we have fun talking about it that's why the facebook is great we 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 have such a, a, a fantastic dialogue opens up we we share this passion sharing it that's also another thing so please take that moment the real pleasure is in the journey it's great to have finally strap on that the Carti tank when you've got it after you've been working your, your butt off for a year, that's fantastic. But also enjoy the research, reading and learning. It's, it's a fantastic thing, it's a fantastic thing. Anyway, I've rambled far too much, I'm gonna leave it there. Please add your own tips, bits of advice for collecting down below in the comments. I'd really like to hear your opinions, questions, queries, all the rest of it. Uh, what are your favorite aspects of collecting? What do you advise new collectors? Uh, anything like that, please do share down below. I'd love hearing your feedback. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.